what are we going to be working on now? Well, because it's Craft Extra, we thought, do you know what? Let's go back to our roots and let's really show people how to use the pigments. Yes. I think it's really easy to... Um, see lots of pots on the counter and mm. think oh yeah no it's a paint it's it's fabulous yeah. you know nice color and then you get it home and you might no, use not. it for one technique the technique perhaps that you know yeah. but there's so many different other ones yeah. and um you know we've been doing this for a long time and we really put the the pigments through their paces and it has to do more than one well it has yeah. to do lots, lots of, of things, things yeah. to make it worthwhile so we thought this hour we're just going to um go back to painting on fabric and there's so many different techniques you can use um with the texture pastes the stardust powder Powders mm. and the multi-surface paint mm. it's uh, um, it's so exciting that um, there's almost like too much to, to say okay. but um, I'm gonna go right back to basics okay. um, painting on fabric now we uh, we've always painted on the same fabric unfortunately we really struggle to get it so mm. we're not able to put it on the show and we use a microfiber but the key to painting on fabric really is to have a loose weave material and the reason you want a loose weave is that when you put your pigment on it you want the the color to seep through the fibers yeah. if it's really really tight like a I mean I can say things like cotton lawn and cotton poplin and a, some people might not know what that mm. is but if you imagine like a, a, a crisp shirt mm. cotton that's really quite tight yeah. when you put your pigment on it the water spreads um, through the fibers but actually the pigment doesn't so you end you end up basically with the pigment stopping in a little spot that's in like the middle a dam basically yes so yeah tight. yeah it doesn't yeah. get a chance to move exactly so when you're choosing your fabrics try and use one mm -hmm. like a linen or or, or the t a type of linen where the fibers are are open okay. so so we've got our microfiber here and, and what we can buy this on the show. I know this. Is no, no, we've got I've a few got bits on our website, oh, yeah, okay, but no. Sorry. But we, like I said, we really struggle mm. to to get it now. Yeah. We've got we've got some, but we certainly oh, didn't okay. have enough. No, that's fine. So, um, but you know, go to go to your local haberdashery and you can yeah, buy fabric, you know yeah. fabric. This is if you're wanting to do um, like um, 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 mixed media pieces and stuff. Okay. So this piece I've got here. Um, I have um, spritzed with water already about, about when you first started the show I just spritzed both sides with a bit of water and I've just left it but actually more often than not, than not when I'm at home I actually put it in a bucket mm. and then I wring it out and then I put it down so it's it's sort of it's damp but yeah. it's not wet wet and that's really right. what you need because you want the fibers to um, so you want it to be sort of uh, moist but not sopping yes exactly so this is our multi-surface paint which um, I did use in the previous hour just like a watercolor um, and I'm going to use it a little bit more um, a, a, a less water and more pigment than I did earlier yeah. and I'm going to stick to two colors yellow and purple mm -hmm. and but the two colours are going to seep together and blend and make gorgeous um, sort of purply oh, browns yeah. and stuff. So, I like that. yeah. I mean, that's. I know we haven't done anything yet, but that's already looking good. It's going to be good. So I literally just paint my um, fabric, uh -huh. and there's there's a bit of sort of um, put it on and wait and see sort of yeah. with this. You can't you can't actually plan a whole lot because you're not quite sure. You know, if, depending on how much pigment you've got and how much water. And it evolves. It you know, evolves. We've, we've done this in the past, and yes. we've left pieces and shown the evolution and. It's yes. one of those techniques where it's always going to be original. You're never going to be able to recreate exactly what you've done. No, exactly. Like and that. no two pieces are the same. Yes, I like it too. I, th mm. I think it's great. Now, ideally, you would have clean water. I've got really oh, dirty okay. water, but it doesn't matter. I, I can still show the technique. So I'm literally just getting pigment on my fabric. Mm -hmm. And these, these um, pigments, they're multi-surface, they're brilliant for fabric. You heat set them with a hot iron um, and then you, you do need to hand wash. Don't put them in a, in a hot wash, yeah. but hand wash, um, it works fine. Is that already, Kathy, uh, Mel, uh, Mel, Kathy, sorry. Um, you put that onto a cushion. Imagine that as a background. I mean, we can put, um, we just had a show with some heat transfer. So if you wanted to put something over there, that's such a great background. Yes, and that, but that's not how it's going to look, Yanis. Yeah. That's, that's, as it dries, mm -hmm. this purple is going to seep into yeah. the um, yellow and make really lovely, soft yeah. hues on yeah. your fabric. Now, you can either leave it like that, yeah. or what you can do is you can um, hang it. 
Oh, so right. just get some clothes pegs and hang yeah. it from a line. And what that means is, if you hang it this way, the yeah. purple is going to travel downwards into the yellow. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get really lovely hues. You can do the same the other way, but it will, it will vary slightly. This and is that's what your neighbours see on your yeah. line. I mean, I, I have big sheets of this on the, on the lawn and I paint it and, and what have you. It's, yeah, it's Kathy, great. I'd love to have you as a neighbour. <laughs> yeah, imagine. Um, great neighbor. And then what you can do, if, if you want to spread it some more, add uh -huh. some, spritz some more water. Yeah. Um, and this will all seep and just become mm. really beautiful. So this is the, this is the start point of using the multi-surface paints. And from here, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to create different techniques. So I just need to have... And just a real testimony to how good the multi-surface paints are, the fact that you have endorsed them and used them for years and years and years. I mean, every, I've worked with yourself and Mel but like what seven years now and you, the multi-surface paints are one of your staples your go-to yeah. so I mean if you've been using them for that long you know that they we can. have we've used the same recipe right from the beginning yeah. um, in fact the paint we used didn't have our name on it and we loved it so much we put our name on it because wow. that's what we we choose to to use like the um, with a shaver yeah just like loved that it so much we've we bought, bought the company yeah, yeah. and um, so so this is where it starts um, and a really good pigment, um, which this is, it's, it's full of pigment. When you add water to a really good pigment, the pig, you can still see the pigment when it's spread out really thin. With one that is all binder and no, or little pigment, mm -hmm. you spread it all out and you can come back and it can almost look like it's disappeared. So that is really the clue of... Pardon? That's good inside and yeah. knowledge. Yeah, so it's a clue as to you know what's a good paint yeah. and what's not. So this will keep. Just for those of you who are not aware, the background. So Kathy has, I mean, uh, painting and is artwork has always been a passion. Yes. Uh, you used to sky from your maths class to do uh, painting. I did. Yes. But um, you were an illustrator. Uh, yes. And a great yeah. illustrator that. So you've poured all that personality. You know what you look for when it comes to mediums. And yeah. Stuff, yeah. Um, well, I I am a paint. I, you know, I, I've painted all yeah. my life. So, um, uh, yeah. So so anyway, th th what I've done is this technique that I've just shown you. I'm going to show you all the samples of what this can become. So basically, this started out, out the same as that, and you can see what I mean about the spreading, and you get this beautiful soft. That looks, isn't that lovely? That looks amazing. Isn't it? I would, do you know that? It look, that looks absolutely fantastic. It looks like a gorgeous sky that you've created. And you say this as it diffuses in the way it blends yeah, onto fabric. This that's is special. fantastic. I really like that. And then this can become the basis of working, so putting your stamps on, yeah. which I'm going to come to later. But don't look at it just as a, as a, a, a you know, a piece of coloured fabric it can be so much more cushions uh, yes. if you're a soft crafter how about quilting so creating your own fabric to quilt it's like you're making your own I know it's not a batik but that kind of similar yes sort of feel well to we're going to do that with pastes as well yeah. on the fabric nice. so so y you know and if you put more water and less pigment you can make it much more subtle yeah. and it's and a lot softer yes and a lot softer now with exactly the same piece from this original painted piece, I can get these lovely, what I call valley and mountains. And it's so, so simple to do. And all it is, is you get your piece of fabric like this mm -hmm. and you scoop it up. You can, you can leave it like that. I put mine in a, in a tray and put it in the airing cupboard so it dries like that. Mm -hmm. um, or if you really want to accentuate that, you just put um, some, uh, twine. some twine or some rubber bands around it. But what happens is, um, actually it's the opposite of what you think think you think that the paint will drop to the troughs and and fade away from the peaks but it doesn't it goes up to the peak so the peaks end up it's with this sort of in. yes it, it's I fan never thought that fantastic it would work that way. yeah I'm, and I apologize if I'm getting ahead of you you might be about to show this but I'm sure we've done a show in the past a long time ago and you put a key and other yeah, things yeah we're coming to oh, that we are, yeah 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 okay, we're coming quiet. to that yeah, okay. uh, which is really exciting yeah. so so this here mm -hmm. ends up when it's out and ironed ends up like that so yeah. so you're beginning now to see the contrast yeah. of, of what you're doing to this piece mm -hmm. so so that's that so we'll send that Same back to where it was mm -hmm. um and let me just wipe my hands okay so, so we're doing, doing that what have, what have you and mel been up to since our last week? oh we're just always designing always yeah. drawing it, you know same we're just always Having trying fun. to yeah we both have far too much fun together. we do I mean, this is meant to be work 
we do we do we're very very lucky yeah, actually you get on very well um so this yeah. one is i don't know if you saw when i painted that i lifted it up and wiped mm -hmm. um the surface yeah. um but i would never do that at home i would get another piece of damp fabric Mop it up place it in the in the um, excess and mop it up mm. and you can still get lovely backgrounds mm. um, usually a bit more subtle but again not wasted Good mop up. yeah and then the next um, thing you can do on your painted piece is to put grinding salt oh. um, so I've done Just this any old salt and any old salt if if you can use table salt mm -hmm. if you grind it you, the marks tend to be a bit more exaggerated mm. but just go over your piece flat mm. or you could do it on your valley and, and um, peaks and troughs and just mm. grind your salt mm. and leave it and then the salt absorbs some of the pigment mm. and you get these little sort of spot texture effects Laura our producer says she only uses pink Himalayan salt would that work Yes, She's very perfect. Posh. Yeah, that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you can lay your um, um, piece of fabric to dry on things. And where it touches things, um, it's going to leave an impression. So very, very simply, this I just laid on a radiator. Just a radi yeah, and, and radiator then, impression. Yeah, and there you can see it's the pigment is drawn to um, a, similar to the to the peaks actually, mm -hmm. where it's touching something, it's drawn. So you can get really, really lovely um, techniques. Do you need um, to have your own gallery evening where you can put these on display? Yeah. Have, can see people milling around. <laughs> this is our radiator impression. Right. So we go from a radiator impression to other impressions. So this is the really exciting yes. bit. And, and again, this is only achievable if you've got a quality paint. Yeah. You, this won't work if you're going to use um, something that's got a lot of binder in it. You want a pigment heavy And does it have paint. to have a bit of weight to it? Uh, yes, it, well, the actual thing you sit yeah. on, yes, you do. I mean, this one here, I put a stencil and it was really a little bit too light. So what I did was I actually put some, in fact, I've got them here, so you can see the shapes of them. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll rest those on there to hold the, the it stencil works down. Really well. And you do get a little impression of, of what was on it. But hey, it. So you're telling me, you know the stencils, the pick and mix that we have? Yes. All of those designs. You could do, yeah. How good would they look here? Yeah. And the the better the effect, the darker the colour, if you sort of me. So if you if you do a pale yellow, yeah. it's not going to show up so yeah, much. So but if you use really a really strong, strong color deep colour, yeah. And then here yeah. I've just got buttons and put buttons oh, on. Love that. And see if you're doing embroidery, if you're an embroiderer and yeah. you want to combine embroidery and paint together, then this technique could be I mean it could be the centre of a flower or a moon. It shows up so well, it's like a picture. Yeah. It really takes that um, impression beautifully. Yeah, fantastic. And then of course I've then gone a bit um, a bit sort so of these blades yeah scalpel you blades got the, ru the rust coming yeah. from the blade and i did actually do another piece with a rusty um uh, and i should have done more of it actually because it didn't work to start with and i've realized now that i need to add more water to make it or leave it for longer That's or right. just keep wetting it um, but you can pick up the most lovely colors from rust this is a door handle scissors work a treat um, and things that do have a little bit more weight to them mm. give a slightly better impression than things that are, are light i think i had to you know weight those yeah. down a bit with something you would if that was a piece of fabric you'd pay if, say a fat quarter you'd pay good money for it of course this. you would yeah it's such lovely design and it's handmade and no two oh, pieces are the, are the same and you, you can personalize it so if you get some something from someone close to you that's really unique to them and transfer it onto the fabric yeah well, I like this now, um, this is a gel plate yeah. so I got our multi-surface paint mm -hmm. painted it on a gel plate and with wet fabric put the wet fabric on the gel plate and squished it down and it picks up the paint and these lovely sort of it's really textural yeah. and especially I mean I quite actually quite like the edge but you know if you were to um, section off for cushions I mean look at that oh, that's perfect. isn't it beautiful yeah it's so nice um, and then this one is the gel plate again um, with le I mean that just I, I love that as texture and then here what I did was I put a stencil on and then with a sponge I just sponged through some multi-surface paint um, again it's, it's just such a good paint to use and again this one is with um, again putting pots of paint on mm -hmm. for doing round and, and I just love circles especially you know if you were to go around that with some gold work 
That looks, that be beautiful. looks a bit like um, you know, light flare when you're taking a picture. Yeah, yeah. And then these little spot effects here is um, you have to time it quite right. When um, the it mustn't be wet and it's got to be so, a little bit damp but, but almost verging on being dry for this to work if you flick clear water at your piece mm. just before it dries and you get these lovely spot effects right. um i'll just show you this one we're slightly out of order here so this one is the valley and troughs again that i said earlier and you get these lovely well, it sort like of marble doesn't it and mm. you get vein marks in it and yeah, it's yeah. it's so lovely and of course you know if you want to color coordinate your your room with cushions you can pick your colors if you i mean it can be whatever you like it's like that rorschach uh but how about like a a leaf under a microscope you kind of see that sort of a real yeah. microscopic view yeah yeah i mean and also you could put a leaf on as long as it's weighted down oh. you could do some because uh, the because the pigment is drawn to where the weight is so if you've got it on there i mean i would have to try it and how see how you have to leave leave it for to get the dessert like well you I'd have to leave it to dry so it would have to okay so as long as it depends how wet your fabric is so if it was mm. very very wet um i would just put it in the in the airing cupboard for 24 hours or so and force dry like um, you could, but the trouble with for uh, th when you naturally d dry something, like for example, if I were to force dry mm -hmm. that now, we wouldn't get all the blending that I'm yeah. waiting for that to Blend, to do. Yeah, yeah. It, it will literally dry as you see it's it there, so and I don't want it to dry no, like that. Nice I want idea. it to be much yeah. more subtle. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we get to the interesting part where you can start stamping onto your fabrics. And so um, this is just a very, I mean, we use different um, 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 ink pads to stamp onto fabric. And our favorite is Versa, Versa Craft. I don't know if you've got any on the website, but we use the Versas. And mm. the Versa is water soluble, so you can stamp it and then spritz it and then it bleeds yeah. and then you can stamp it again on the top but not spritz it so you define the edges and then of course you can paint on the top or you can wash it out with water and you get these really subtle effects yeah. or um, which I'm going to show you we're going to do um, stamping with the cat onto okay. fabric bumblebee cat yeah but with the versa versa fine clair so okay. unfortunately yeah. you can't move the lines no. but it still it's can still work. work with yeah, yeah. first fine clair is very popular right? yeah and then of course you know you can do oh, your backgrounds that's nice. and again I mean this is a really old stencil of ours yeah. but um, this is the uh, multi-surface paint again it's our beautiful turquoise um, wave um, and I think this is our I think this is our red but you can see how you can um, I've used the same colors in the background really dilute and then use the same colors again and Mel has added these beautiful crystals onto mm. I mean look at that I mean, it's absolutely, you can see it's spark yeah. sparkling. And actually the sparkle also over there is the um, glitter, um, glitter multi-surface that literally the binder is clear and there's no colour to it, but you've just left with the sparkle and you sit, I mean, if you haven't got crystals, just that in itself, yeah, yeah. just sitting on the top just makes it really spark and it really is sparkly. Oh, it's just nice. beautiful. Nice. Yeah. So, so that's that part mm -hmm. of um, painting on fabric um, and then I also want to show you that we do um, some different techniques now we've got texture paste on the show and these ones are the texture paste through mm. a couple of stencils oh, so set three texture paste so we've got the white black and the yes clear. so we've got the white the white the black and the clear and this is a technique that I use quite often onto um, paper and I'm hoping that can I just see if this one's dry mm -hmm. yeah this it might need a little I did this a few hours ago it takes a lot longer to dry on fabric I think it's, it's, I can see it's a bit milky. When you put it on, it's milky, and then as it dries, it dries clear. Mm. But I think it's dry enough for me to do a demo on it. Yeah. Um, so we'll go on to that one. Um, but the, the, I mean, Mel says she likes the black. I, I love the black. So what I did here was I painted it first in um, just like a pale pink. I put the texture paste on, then I've gone on top with, um, darker colors and what it's done particularly with the clear you can still see the pink under the clear just do, do you see what i mean mm. um but i just love it i even love the backs i mean look at that for the back of the fabric um, it's just got this sort of mottled effect and then of course you could do your sewing on the top or machine embroidery mm. on that oh god would love it so so that's that but we're going to show um 
the texture paste. So okay. let me let me cut this bit off. I'm going to use the clear, and let's use a different stencil this time. I think I used. Um, yeah. Let's use this one. I mean, it's very very fine. Oh, nice. so wait, this one. So your daughter designed that. She did. Yes. Oh, I didn't know now that your daughter followed in your footsteps. Um, well, she's a, she's just about to qualify as a graphic yeah. designer and illustrator. Yeah, from oh, university. Amazing. So um, she's very very different to me. Very yeah. her style is quite contemporary. And um, what's your daughter's name? Dora. Dora. Mm. Okay. Dora. So, oh well, I hope you're watching, Dora. It's lovely to see you. I don't I think, think she'll be watching. She won't be watching, Yanis. She's got far more she? interesting things to do. I think she'll surprise you. <laughs> Um, and I mean, it it, it, stick, it kind of sticks really well to the fabric as you put it on, spread it through. Um, it kind of holds the stencil in place. Ooh. So I'm going to do the whole lot. Um, now, I'm not saying that you can launder this um, and put it in a machine on a hand wash. I've not actually tried it. Yeah. But just by the nature of a texture paste, mm -hmm. it's not too different actually than a, than a uh, multi-surface paint when it's dry, that it's got this sort of, it has like a waterproof um, top coat to it. So I don't see why you couldn't um, hand wash. Yeah, hand wash. But I always, I always think it's really funny when people say about washing fabrics. When you spent a long time embroidering and sticking it, I don't think it's by, a bit like art in a, in a hoop. Yeah, you're not wash you, it. You, you don't really wash it. Barring a disaster. No, you wouldn't need to. It's not like clothes that so you're wearing, you know. I mean, look at that for fineness. Now, it's milky in colour, but it will actually dry, dry clear. clear. Yeah. So, and the thing you have to do is you have to put this in water straight away because um, it dries really hard. And that's yeah, why yeah. I think you can probably launder it. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Okay. Um, to dry and and then this is one I did earlier on and I'm going to use my paint and this my I paint did back. see you force drying a little bit yes I did uh, let's see if we can do I think we'll use a let's use the dark blue I love this blue and a bit of purple so we'll mix the two together um, and all we would do is thick paintbrush yeah, my water is just getting dirtier and dirtier by the minute. Um, Do you want any clear water? No, no, it's fine. Oh, now this is a bit of a magic trick. Yeah, but can you see this where... This is working as a resist. Yeah, it's, it's just like batik. Yeah. I love it. I could watch that all day long. Yeah, and me too. And this as a design that is absolutely beautiful. So we're sort of obliterating the colour that we had seen mm -hmm. and all you are seeing it in the in the stencil and creating a new colour as the background. But it's so cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. And with I mean something like this, uh, say we let it dry naturally and then you get that softness. Yes. Uh, sort of billowing colour yeah, behind cloud like you, yeah I mean it's beginning to happen here now actually mm. it's slowly starting to, to but that will take quite some time to get to the same as the ones I've been showing you I like how you work off tiles too yes I, you I just always go to work local tile shop yeah I've got I've got this one lives here mm. um, and I've got a massive one at home and what do you say to them you say can I have one large tile well I get I'll go in and they um, see me looking think oh great this is gonna be a big order she's got yeah. big tiles so can I have one please <laughs> Um, but look at that, isn't that beautiful? It's, it's really soft and yeah. subtle. Can you see? This would be a nice opportunity to embroider of that. I mean, to go in and, and do some embroidered detail on there. Too. Yeah, or putting crystal. I mean, Mel could go to town on this with crystals. Oh, yeah. It would look absolutely beautiful. And I I'd put it in a box frame. And then what we're going to do is our next technique. I hope I'm going to have enough time. Yeah. Is to show you that in actual fact we can stamp onto. Um, oh, look at bumblebee. I cat. mean, look at that. I mean, that as a background in a box frame yeah. would be just so beautiful. So I've got my um, bumblebee cat on here. Mm -hmm. This is the bigger one without the wings, um, which I thought would go pretty well with this one here. And like I say, okay. ordinarily, we would use Vers Versacraft because you can stamp it stamp it on spritz it and i'll show you a big piece in a moment but i just want to get this one underway um, but for on this occasion i'm going to use um, versifying claire now 
don't be disappointed if it doesn't come out crystal clear because mm. it the the smoother your fabric the clearer it will yeah. be yeah. the more texture which i've actually have got on on here the less it will it will be it obvious like the cat that got the cream yeah but what we do is with paint we're going to um, bring out the detail of the cat so if it doesn't make a very very good impression it's not the end of the world mm -hmm. you got pets I have. I've got two cats yeah. and my Lucy, who's a beautiful, not quite one, Jack Russell. Oh, and do the cats and Jack Russell get on? Oh, yeah, really, really well. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Do they always get on? Yeah, always, yeah. Uh, well, the Jack Russell came as a puppy when the cats were grown up, so she doesn't know any different. She knows, you know. But, Just I mean, that's not a bad impression, is it, Yanis? That's good. And look at the detail on the face. You're so good. Uh, whenever you guys come in, and bring your stamps that have character yeah and that's a great this design. is this one's drawn by Meredith and she's yeah. she's oh she's such a fantastic um, designer and really, really she is got to applaud both yourself and Mel for to pink ink and we know pink ink and everything uh, pink ink designed uh, by Kathy and Mel they work together and they, they give you something that's beautiful so pink ink love that catkin was about discovering new talent that we're seeing here yes. and being able to showcase that artwork and i'm so glad you guys did that yeah i am as well because it's very difficult um, to be a commercial artist and to make to make a living at it it's mm. it's really really difficult and um you know we've we've got a route to market that works really well for us and if we can help some um, young people um work commercially then that's got to be good for everybody hasn't it oh. Well, you've got to applaud. That's a really good sentiment. Comes from a good place. Yes. Well, you know, I, I've been there. You know, leaving yeah. leaving college and thinking, right now, I've got to. How yeah, am I going to earn do, a living? Yeah. You know, being an, an artist, it's not easy. Yeah. And it's very easy then to fall in, just get a job, lose sight of your dreams. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do that. So, can you see that, that I'm using this quite loose, and I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm not bothered if it bleeds because I'm trying to concentrate mainly the colour. Um, in here and I'm going to show you a piece in a minute r really illustrates that um, and I would carry on building and building um, with the pigment um, and like I said that this is why this is so good I mean this is really dilute to sort of mid dilute and to the spoons mm. which are you know quite concentrated and then what I what I do in order to be able to cut this cut out where nothing frays yeah I can still embroider on it if I wanted to that's do you know, I saw that cut out. I didn't think that was on the fabric. Yeah, that's fabric. Can I show you this? I mean... It's cool, isn't it? That is so cool. But how did you get so much detail in there? I mean, obviously, it's a compliment to the stamp. Is it just the stamp? Well, I've, over? I've stamped it and then I painted it. And then with a, I have put a little tiny bit of black pen just to highlight a few areas that I felt needed a bit of um, highlighting. Wow. I've done that on top. I am seriously impressed by that but in order to be able to cut it out Yanis so mm -hmm. if I want if I cut this out now um, it would fray so all I do is use a bit of um, water mix of PVA mm -hmm. about 50 50 yeah. um, and it doesn't need to be really really thick the thicker it is the more difficult it is to stitch into mm -hmm. so in fact if anything you want less and you literally just paint your solution over the top well, that's a bit thick um, solution over the top of your mm -hmm. design let it dry and then you can cut it out. Wow, that and simple. that's it. That is as simple that as is a that. Great crafty hack from Kathy there. Love yeah. that. By the way, I love your shoes. These are cool. Thank I you. Mean, unfortunately, we can't show you these shoes, but they're very good. Yeah. yeah. They are very nice. So that's again, that's a bit of a tease. I'm saying I can't show you. I mean, this is one I actually I did on a show here a long, long time ago. Oh. But then this is how you build up your, um, you know, with your. Um, um, elements mm -hmm. you know you can start sculpting 3d glue but imagine if that was all embroidered um, and my my top tip if you do want to do this technique and embroider is to do your embroidery before you put your PVA glue on oh. it's just easier put your glue on and then you cut the whole thing out and if you yeah. happen to snip a little thread it doesn't Covered. matter because you've yeah because you've okay. done that and then I just want to show you so you've got 10 minutes to yes. show whatever you want to show so can I help you yes if you could now these these are old oh, these are your kits I remember these. yeah these are old designs but it just goes to show when Ooh, I'm talking sorry. about embroidery and PVA 
glue. I just realised that was wet, but it didn't oh, get it's, it's fine. Um, but can you see what I mean about all these little elements? have all been pe This is all painted with our multi-surface paint. Um, and then wow. this, this one, Mel embroidered, and this just goes to show how you can use your embroidery um, skills. Oh, I mean, isn't that lovely? Done. Do I remember that doing shows in the past and you had those kits um, to, yeah, to build pre Yeah, but we did pre-printed fabric. Do which you is, still do that? Uh, no, because, I mean, this design is now a stamp. Oh, so okay, people yeah, people can stamp their own fabric, their own, yeah. use the techniques that I've shown you here, yet also use it on for paper craft. It's nice to see the evolution yeah. there of painting. Yeah. So all these yeah. are available as um, stamps now, nice. but I just wanted to bring this to show the embroidery element yeah, yeah. to it.